Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about Hannah Arendt's essay, Truth and Politics. In this essay, Arendt makes the extraordinary, kind of counterintuitive claim that facts are fragile. I'm going to spend this video talking about what she means by that, and also explain why Arendt thinks it's so important that we stand up for a factual account of reality. So early on in this essay, Arendt distinguishes between different kinds of truth. She notes, for example, mathematical truths, scientific truths, and philosophical truths. And she differentiates all of those from factual truth, which she claims is the kind of truth that's concerned with human events, things that happen in the world. And her key claim early in this essay is that truth is more or less durable depending on what kind of truth we're talking about. Mathematical truths, for example, are extraordinarily durable. Well, and next comes scientific truths. After that, philosophical truths of the sort that Plato or Aristotle arrived at, those are maybe less durable, but still more durable than factual truth. So what does this all mean? How are some truths more durable than others? Here's a thought experiment. Let's imagine for a minute that humanity went the way of the dinosaurs. An enormous meteor crashed into Earth and wiped out all human life. Now let's project millions of years into the future. Some new species has risen up on Earth approximately like human beings. Arendt's claim is that even though all human life has been wiped out, and even if all records of our existence have been lost or submerged, these new inhabitants of Earth could still discover the triangle. They could still discover the Pythagorean theorem. Maybe they'd call a square something other than a square, but a square would still have the same properties. Two plus two would still equal four. That's what gives mathematics its durability. If, for example, we refused to teach a generation of people mathematics, they could still, through their own study, work out the principles of mathematics themselves. The same is more or less true of science. Scientific principles might be a little more complex, might require a bit more imagination, but Arendt argues that the theories of Einstein or Stephen Hawking, for example, could still eventually be worked out by people even if they had no record of our working them out. She goes further and says the same is true of philosophy, that the deep questions and arguments worked out by people like Plato or Kant, those will still be there waiting for a new species of people or a new generation of people. Now Arendt says, and this is critically important, the same is not true of historical facts. Historical facts, things, events that happen in the human world, these have a kind of existence that's much more fragile. It will be much more difficult and maybe impossible for some new species of beings or for a new generation of people to recover things that happened from the past if there's no record of those things happening. That kind of knowledge cannot be reproduced without a record. Now Arendt argues that this has enormous political consequences because it's not really the meteor we need to worry about, but instead it's political power because facts can be extraordinarily inconvenient to political power or those in political power. And those in power often have an interest in either concealing or even destroying certain facts. Arendt writes, the chances of factual truth surviving the onslaught of power are very slim indeed. It is always in danger of being maneuvered out of the world, not only for a time, but potentially forever. Facts and events are infinitely more fragile things than axioms, discoveries, theories, even the most wildly speculative ones produced by the human mind. They occur in the field of the ever-changing affairs of men. Once they are lost, no rational effort will ever bring them back. Perhaps the chances that Euclidean mathematics or Einstein's theory of relativity let alone Plato's philosophy, would have been reproduced in time if their authors had been prevented from handing them down to posterity are not very good either. Yet they are infinitely better than the chances that a fact of importance, forgotten or more likely lied away, will one day be rediscovered. The real threat to facts, Arendt believes, is something she calls organized lying, a coordinated and concerted effort to undermine the factual character of human events. Facts, Arendt posits, are a kind of check on the operation of power. While we can argue about the meanings of facts or their relative importance, we can debate which facts we ought to take more seriously than other facts. All of this is normal within the realm of human affairs. But what we can't do, what we can't allow, according to Arendt, is to allow people in power to dispute the existence of facts altogether. All of this speaks to the enormous importance of public institutions like newspapers, libraries, museums, archives, and let's not forget universities places where facts are stored. These are institutions that maintain the public record. They maintain the factual account of reality. Arendt argues that the agenda of certain streams of political power is to lie factuality out of existence. The purpose of constant lying, says Arendt, is not to replace the truth with the lie. 
The purpose of constant lying is to undermine the character of factuality itself. She says the agenda of organized lying within politics is to make facts seem like matters of opinion. And once facts turn into opinion, then there is no factual account of reality. There is no agreed upon basis for human action. Political decisions become meaningless and impossible. And once that happens, Arendt says, reality becomes extraordinarily malleable. It can be shaped and reshaped according to the whims of whoever has power. This is the fascist ambition, to render the world into something that can be reshaped into whatever power wants it to be. In other words, the result of a consistent and total substitution of lies for factual truth is not that the lies will now be accepted as truth and the truth be defamed as lies, but that the sense by which we take our bearings in the real world and the category of truth versus falsehood is among the mental means to this end is being destroyed. It's critical to remember that Arndt, who was a German Jew and fled Europe during the Second World War for America, understands fascism and totalitarianism to be the great threat to human life. Before we conclude, let's talk for a minute about fascism. And one of the reasons fascism is so dangerous is because it's so threatening to our factual account of human events. There are different ways we might define a fascist regime. They typically have dictatorial or authoritarian leaders. They often use nationalist or racist rhetoric, myths of national or racist superiority. And importantly, while fascism is often identified with the far right, Arendt believes that fascism can emerge on the right or the left of the political spectrum. So you could have a dictatorship that's both fascist and communist, for example. For Arendt, one of the defining features of fascism is the political opposition to facts. Fascist leaders and regimes treat facts like enemies. We need to be especially watchful for this because if governments are not required to respect facts, they become radically free. They have the capacity to say things and then claim they never said them. They can rewrite history to serve their interests. They become free to categorize specific people or groups as criminals or threats, all without evidence. And historically, this tends to be minority groups, but it could also be political opponents, anyone who opposes the regime or those in power. And that's why Arndt believes we need to speak up for facts. Okay, that's it for me, everybody. Thanks very much for watching.